All right, giddy, hi and welcome. Okay, uh, bass update. <laughs> uh, don't worry about the Mark Holcomb guitar. There's a slipper under the heel there. Just because people be uh, freak out. Oh yeah, don't leave the guitar on the ground like that. You'll ruin the headstock. Uh, headstock's off the ground, so. Nice uh, D7 tuning there. <sighs> My Ibanez Geo. Okay, so I'm at about a year and a half or whatever. Uh of uh playing bass and i'm getting ready to upgrade basses now i want a six string bass but i also want to, like i want a couple of basses you might have, find this hard to believe but i tend to buy a lot of musical instruments and <laughs> it's not even all of them there's like musical instruments, like cram. I'm, I'm like a squirrel cramming instruments all over the house. I'm sure there's something in the fridge too. Uh, but anyway, uh, the bass here, this bass is a, what's great about this bass is that there's nothing great about it. It's a piece of wood with enough stain on it so it doesn't uh, uh, take on too much moisture. And it's a bass shaped object that uh, makes noise, but it has its problems. And the problem isn't with the playability or like that, it's with the scale length. So a five string bass with a 34 inch scale length is not long enough. And the low B, it more, like if you're a jazz player, it will work for you because you don't really need that really articulate low B. You more have it as a, you know, like jazz guys and blues guys tend to have a way more muddier tone. And so that that's, it's plenty tight enough. But for the metal guys, it doesn't work. The only thing that's going to work with a five and a six string bass for metal guys typically is going to be uh, fan fret stuff, you know, multi-scale. And for a six string bass, you definitely want to, you know, uh, um, a multi-scale. I was that close to buying an Ibanez uh, TBT six string bass the other night. And I kind of got talked into it and talked out of it at the same time from uh, the arts music store over there in, uh, um, not uh, Markham, Ontario, but anyway, near, near Yorkville, anyway. Um, Newmark, yeah, they're in Newmarket. And the bass player guy, I said, look, uh, I, I said, look, I got, the, I told him what I had, and I bought, that's where I bought this bass from. Uh, well, I mail ordered it from them. And I explained the whole concept of what I was doing and everything like that. And I said, the, the two bases I was looking at was the M7 Marcus Miller six string uh, base and the uh, Ibanez TBT that was in stock uh, six string base, but not fan fret, 35 inch scale. And I said, was there a big difference between the 35 inch scale on the low B and the 34 inch scale? And he says, be honest with you, not that much. He goes, it's still kind of flubby. It's, it's not like the extended range, you know, like Dingwall territory where like 37 inch uh, multi-scale stuff. And he was saying like there was a shorter scaled length, um, you know, multi-scaled Ibanez base, it, it, one of the black label ones, uh, which uh, Long McQuaid has in stock right now. And the the problem isn't that so much just that the scale length on this isn't long enough. It's but it's it's because it's even. So what happens is you have a little bit too much tension on your high G, and you don't have quite enough tension on the low B, right? And everything in between. So the E, A, D, and D and G are you can live with those as a four string bass no problem but the low B when you if you add any sort of like distortion on the bass or whatever it just turns and kind of muddy it more of like a drone than a natural articulated note so for metal bass players this is kind of a you know a no-go zone you know what I mean like it's just not going to work because you won't have the clarity so I've decided to live with this base for a little bit longer, which I'm going to live with. I'm going to keep this base for a long time. I'll probably sell it at some point once I got a plethora of like really high end bases or whatever. But I also thought, well, there's only maybe about three or four bases on the market that I can buy other than Dingwalls, right? If you can find a Dingwall. But basically, it leaves me in the Ibanez category for a six string base. There's only one Ibanez base. 
that is a you know the long scale uh, six uh, six string bass that's long scale like the thirty seven inch, and that's one of the BTBs. Um, so that's about the only bass that would really work well for metals for six string bass. Um, you know, it's cause it kind of, it's kind of like a, like a ding wall in the sense. And then after that, you're looking at ding walls. Uh, there's not too many multi-scale bases out there to begin with. Like there, there's a lot, but there's not that, like all the ding walls are pretty much multi-scale, but there's a reason why they're all multi-scales because that's the only thing that works for the metal players and stuff like that. The guys that want like good even string tension on each string and they don't want just a flubby note they want really sharp notes they want the b to be as lively as the g string you know what i mean or the high c string if you if you've got a six string so i ended up i was going to buy the bass but i decided not to because i thought well okay i've heard demos of people playing that that, that bt uh btb uh, six string and it was like okay it sounds okay but you could tell that it's not as clear you know like i'd always be thinking like even if i spent that much money i'd be still thinking this is not quite what i want and so i've decided that it's better just to hold off for a, a better you know for that either other ibanez base to be in stock or just hold out for a ding wall <laughs> yeah yeah go crazy with the ding wall uh but ding walls six string bases are because ding wall only makes maybe about 1500 bases a year so they're really hard to get a hold of so if you got one you're in a very exclusive club but they're also ridiculously expensive right so i obviously still got to finish paying for the the uh, drum kit the good news is that because i didn't buy a guitar this month and i didn't buy a uh you know this guitar will be paid off at the end of this month which is cool this is the last guitar for me to pay for uh but i'm going to be completely zero if i well if i don't buy any other things which i'm probably going to buy a bass amp uh this month next month you know probably at the more likely early next month and the double bass pedal for that and then what i might do instead of worrying about the six string for now is I'll hang on to this thing as the five string, you know, for my metal stuff, but I might get myself just a really decent four string. And um, I thought about it, it's like, okay, because I, I do want a really good four string, you know, at some point. Uh, but I'm also thinking one of those things that if I had the six string and just, you know, like just bite the bullet and, you know, go into debt for that for a little while, if I can get, get one, uh, and get exactly what I want. And then I could just focus on playing that thing. Uh, kind of like how I focus on playing just my soul. This is the only bass I own. So I know what tools I need to solve the problems of the tension issues. And the, the tension issue on this is the similar problem I have with my eight string guitar, which is like right there, which the only, if you're going to buy an eight string guitar, don't waste your money on them unless you're going to buy a fan fret. I don't, don't care about the price of the fan fret. Uh, just don't waste your money on a eight string uh, unless you get a fan fret because the problem is is you, the, the, the uh, low F sharp and the low B just won't have enough tension on it. And it, it it's just a really muddy sound. So it sounds more like a drone, right? When you play this note, you know, uh, or this string, even with a detuned, it's, it, the scale length is proper for it, right? So every note, is really clear where what can happen when you don't have enough tension on your uh your your low your low b is that you could actually be completely off by a half step and not notice it while you're recording because it just it's like a like a blurby droning note rather than a sharp articulate note right so I know I need a multi-scale length for anything like a five string or a six string. Now, five strings, there's lots of five string multi-scales on the market. Six strings getting a little, they're, they're, they're out there, but there's, you know, there's not a lot of them. And the thing is, is there's not a lot that are in a, you know, a, a more affordable price range. So the way I look at it is that if I have this and then a really good four string bass that, uh, you know, like a really good, you know, with a lot of sound options, that'll cover a lot of territory right there. And then later on, work on getting the uh, really impeccable six string, you know, uh, pay things down and then, you know, 
use that as the, uh, you know, get the other thing like the bass amp first because I kind of need one anyway. Like if I do want to play live, I'm going to need a bass amp. I don't really need the bass amp for recording because uh, my BR-1200, I just plug straight into it. And then I want the double bass pedal for the drums, which kind of completes the, the core of the drum kit for me where, you know, uh, from there on, all I got to do is maybe add a couple of cymbals over time and just new skins every now and then. I can't wait to put new skins on this um, drum kit. It's going to look pretty pretty badass uh you can get color coded drum kits so i don't know if i'm gonna go with all green <laughs> you know or black you know a nice big black uh you know uh face on the drum kit uh you know resonator on on the uh bass drum would look pretty cool too uh but we'll see you know i mean you know these skins are going to be good for a while but anyway getting back to the bass that's where i'm at with the bass so yes i probably will pick up a bass fairly soon uh, but I'm probably going to focus on the four, a really good quality four string bass. And, uh, like my goal was when I bought this, I, these two, I got at the exact same time, which was last March. And when I got them, like the bass, I wasn't going to get it. I was like, I don't want to waste money on a cheap bass and then have to upgrade. But I really, really wanted a bass at the time. So now I've got the bass, the drums, and multiple guitars, acoustic and electric. And the only really other thing I, I'm going to add for recording is probably a, a keyboard or something like that um, later on. There's no rush for that one. You know, if I get that in two years, three years from now, that's fine.